question arises in mind of Arjuna. Lord Krishna said earlier, Yogi Yunjita Satatam Atmanam that the yogi or the aspirant should constantly try to concentrate his mind upon the object of meditation, meaning one should develop in the life through meditation and identification with the object of meditation and in case of the teaching of Bhagavad Gita one should constantly meditate upon the self in keeping with the teaching. Now usually if you see the qualifications of the meditator described by Lord Krishna there Yogi Yunji Tasadam Atmanam Rahasisthitaha being in a place of solitude Egaki, being by himself, Nirashihi, free from any expectations or desires, Aparigraha, devoid of any possessions. That description really fits with the sannyasi. And in short, Lord Krishna talks about a full time aspirant here, not a part time, although everybody is a full time in one way or the other, but still, Karma Yogi also is a full time aspirant, no doubt. But still, Karma Yoga has a limited time to be able to meditate or contemplate because of the demands that are there upon his or her time. So when a person gains a, a frame of mind, where they say he or she is able to be with themselves, when one has discovered a comfort with oneself, when you can meditate is when there is comfort with oneself, there is also a keen interest or love for knowledge and a love for gaining this knowledge and abundance in knowledge when that has become the priority. So in course of one's own spiritual growth or, or emotional maturity, that does become a priority at one time that that's all I need now, I don't want anything else. Not that he has aversion for anything else, but then he sees a strong need that this is what I want. I want to gain an abundance in knowledge. Other things are lost interest as far as that person is concerned and now this consumes his interest. If such a thing happens then a person becomes what we call a renunciate. He gives up all his duties, takes to love or renunciation and goes to teacher or whatever and then spends his time in contemplation, in study and contemplation. So when thus a person has given up his duties, his rituals, you see what happens is when a person is a householder, that every day the person performs various rituals, which are the forms of worship, or even if you, even if you don't perform the Vedic ritual, some kind of worship is always there in the life of a religious person. And that qualifies you because every time any worship is performed, that generates punya. And therefore, a light householder who is a spiritual person as well as a religious person, in whose life there are these religious practices, that person definitely earns punya or merit, which would qualify him to go to either Pitruloka or Sargaloka. Pitruloka is world of main, Sargaloka is heavens. So depending upon what kind of life he leads, he will qualify. He is assured of a, uh, a, a, a good place in the other realm after his death. If on the other hand, that is a sannyasi who has given up that, then sannyasi now no more performs his daily rituals and worship and so forth. And so the kind of punya that he is no more earning now, 
then suppose one who has dedicated oneself to the pursuit of knowledge at the exclusion of everything else. And if as a result of the pursuit he does gain an abundance in knowledge and gains moksha, liberation, then it's fine. That's the purpose of his having taken to the life of renunciate. But having become a renunciate and having and making some effort, Arjuna's question now is, what happens if this person happens to die? Meaning, if this prarabdha karma or destiny comes to an end and suppose death comes to him and he has not yet gained the ultimate goal of moksha. Then what will happen to this person? So what happens to whatever spiritual gain one has in this lifetime? What happens to that when a person dies? So this question applies to everybody in a way. But Arjuna's question particularly is, for a yogi or for a seeker of knowledge, who is a full-time seeker as we said, therefore in Puja Swami is where he has burnt all his boats. That is, he is no more performing those rituals, etc., which would qualify him to go to heavens or whatever. And he has not gained the goal in terms of moksha. And suppose that person dies, what happens to him? This is Arjuna's question. So with this in mind, Arjuna asks in the next verse, verse 38. Arjuna uvacha. Ayatish 37, I'm sorry. Ayatish shraddhayo petaha. Yoga chalita manasaha. Aprapya yoga sam siddhim. Kam gatim krishna gachade. Ayatihi. So, Ayatna Shila is called Yatihi. One who is striving sincerely is called Yati. Yati also means a sannyas or renunciate, but Yati, the word is there to root yet in the sense of make an effort. So, Yati is the one who is making a sincere effort. Ayatihi. So here this person has taken a life of renunciation all right, but for whatever reason, he is somewhat, he is somewhat not strong enough in his effort. For whatever reason, he does not, is not able to put in a total effort in this pursuit of mastering his mind, focusing mind upon the self, gaining and abiding in the self, in that effort. He, his effort is not adequate. Ayatihi. Meaning, alpa prayatna. Alpa artena, it is a, is, is, a, is a negative particle, which has six different meanings. One of them is alpa, or in, in terms of smallness. Ayatihi. Ayatihi is not, not yati. Ayati means one who is not who is not making adequate effort, <coughs> who does not make adequate effort, alpa prayatna, the person who makes a limited effort, not as much effort that is should have been making, so a person who makes limited effort. Shraddhaya upetaha, however, he is endowed with shraddha. Because of shraddha, in fact, he has taken to life of renunciation. You see, to give up the Householder's life, to give up all the security of the householder's life, and security of karma kanda, meaning performing your daily rituals, knowing that that earns you definitely a place in heavens, giving up that security. He takes to life of renunciation wherein he doesn't know what exactly will happen, whether he'll be able to attain the goal or not, but he is shraddha. He has his faith or a trust. In, in, in the teaching, in the, in the pramanam, that what the Upanishads say, what Bhagavad Gita teaches, is the thing. And this, uh, that Abhyasa Vairag is the method. 
And with that trust, he applies himself, that is why he has become a renunciator. Sraddhaya obetaha. And some of you, those of you who have studied Tatuvada know that Shraddha is one of the six qualities of the Samadhi Shadka Sampatti. Samadama Uparama Tadiksha Shraddha Samadhanam. So when Lord Krishna says the Lord with Shraddha means that he also has other qualities. He also enjoys the reasonable amount of tranquility of mind, the control over the sense organs. He has also the power of forbearance or, or you know, to Tritiksha. I mean, the power to suffer or power to, to bear, bear with the pain and the discomfort. So these qualities that are required for becoming a sannyasi also he has. All of these are implied or indicated by the word Shraddha. Shraddha ya upetaha. Yes, Shraddha. And other qualities also require for living the life of renunciate and doing what he needs to do. Yoga chalita manasa hai. However, his sadhana or his spiritual pursuit is interrupted by death. And in the 8th chapter, Lord Krishna will say that at the time of death, what will be your thought that determines your subsequent destination? Yoga chalita manasa hai. If this yogi, when he, when he died, his thought was, Aham Brahma, I am Brahman. If that was his thought, then of course, he is, he is liberated. Meaning that, he is one with Brahman, becomes one with Brahman. But if that is not his thought, because he has not gained that kind of an abidance, he has not gained that mastery of the mind, and therefore it is possible that he may have some other kind of a thought. Whatever is the most predominant thought automatically occurs at the time of death. If the predominant thought in my life has been none of seeking pleasure, then that kind of a thought will take over my mind. The predominant thought is one of worship, that will take over my mind. Whatever is the predominant thought? As yet, that I am Brahman, that has not become the most predominant thought, because his sadhana or spiritual pursuit is not complete. Therefore, he dies with some other kind of a thought. Yoga chalita manasa And so, one whose mind wanders away from this thought of I am Brahman. Aprap yoga samsiddhim. And samsiddhi of the perfection in yoga, namely, an abiding knowledge is not gained, meaning that he is not qualified for moksha. So before he achieves his goal, namely moksha, he passes away. Kaam gatim Krishna gachadi, he Krishna. Kaam gatim gachadi, what will be his destiny? <coughs> what is it that in fact he will achieve afterwards? Where will he go? Meaning, what will be his destiny? <coughs> And Arjuna uh, clarifies this question further, says in the next verse. Because you wonder why is he asking question, that why he clarifies his own question further. Kachinno bhaya vibhrashtaha Chinna bhramiva nasyate Apratishto Mahabaho Vimudho Brahman of Pati Kachit is, is in the sense of asking, will it be? Is that so? Kachit here Arjuna gives an illustration to explain his points. Arjuna says, like a cloudlet that gets separated from a group of clouds. So sometimes in a, we see in the sky a group of clouds all going together. Another group of clouds going together. 
Sometimes it happens that one little cloud or a cloudlet, you may say, gets separated from the previous group to join the next group. He hurries up. Maybe this, this group of cloud is going at a little slow speed. That is going at a faster speed. And ever one cloud from the whole group of clouds separates from the previous group and wants to join the next group. If he joins the next group, then there's no problem, he'll continue. But now, this cloudlet has led the previous, has left the previous group. And unfortunately, before it joins the next group of clouds, suppose a strong wind comes and the clouds become, cloudlets become scattered. Then it is neither here nor there. It is neither here because he left the safety in the warmth of this group and not there because he did not join the next group. Ubhay brashta hai. Ubhay brashta hai. One who has fallen from both. One who has fallen from both, meaning that he is neither in this group, that group, and chinna brahmiva. That, that cloud becomes destroyed, becomes scattered because of the wind. Similarly also, this aspirant of the seeker has given up the previous cloud, group of clouds, namely karma kanda. So he has given up the life of karma. Karma means the life of worship involving karma. And so what, what we mean by grihastha or a person engaged in action is, he is also a devotee. Except that he performs his rituals and performs all his duties in the spirit of worship. So that he has given up because he thinks it is too slow. He thinks that now that is not for him, he wants to now dedicate himself only to constant contemplation. And therefore he gives up this set of clouds, meaning he becomes a renunciate, and therefore no more performing those rituals which he was performing formerly. Meaning that he no more is a benefit of the punya or the virtue which he might have acquired had he been performing those rituals and therefore perhaps he would no more gain the heavens which would have been assured to him if he had continued his previous religious life of activity. <coughs> and he wants to join the next cloud of renunciates who are liberated. And therefore he takes renunciation <laughs> and leaves that and wants to become liberated, John wants to join the next set of clouds. In between, the wind of death comes and his life is snatched away. So Lord, what will be the, the destiny of this person? Will it be like that cloud which is scattered and therefore is out of existence and is destroyed? So, Apratistho Mahabaho Vimudo Brahmana Pati Brahmana Pati Vimudaha He has not gained identification of Brahman because meaning that he has not gained an abidance in knowledge of Brahman and therefore he is not the benefit of being liberated. Apratistha therefore he does not have pratistha he does not have he is not settled anywhere either in the path of karma or the path of jnanam. So two stages are there, not two paths are there. The first stage is the pursuit of, the, the spiritual pursuit in the form of karma. The second stage is continuing spiritual pursuit in the form of pursuit of knowledge. But this karma marga he has given up. He has not gained an abidance in the jnana marga also. A pratishto therefore, he doesn't have any pratishta or abidance in either of them. What will happen? Kachin, Nasyadi, will, will he be destroyed? Like that cloudlet? This is question. And he addresses Lord Krishna as Mahabahu, having mighty arms. So why does the Lord have mighty arms? So that he can protect his devotees. At the same time, he can grant his devotees wishes also, both ways. The powerful arms are to protect the devotees, as well as to fulfill the wishes of the devotees. Both of which are implied by Arjuna. To protect the devotee, to protect me. 
from the harm that can come if I become an renunciate. And grant me the result in form of moksha. Oh Lord, you are Mahabahu. Please tell me what will happen to the aspirant. <clears throat> then Lord Krishna says, okay, I mean, why do you have to ask me this question? You can ask anybody else. So Arjuna says, no, you alone are the most qualified to answer this question. And so in the third verse, so three verses are told by Arjuna. This is a rare thing. That is, he in fact clarifies this question in three verses. In the third verse he says, Etan me samshayam krishna Etan me samshayam krishna Chetu marhasya sheshataha Chetu marhasya sheshataha Tvadanya samshaya syasya Cheta Nahiba Padyate This is some share of the doubt. Now the doubt is a killer. If there is a doubt as to what can happen, suppose Arjuna has a doubt or any aspirant has a doubt. Just suppose I dedicate myself to this path of knowledge and giving up everything else. Losing the security or that comes to one by way of performing a rituals, at least with assurance of heavens, has that security have been given up, and not yet gain the ultimate goal of moksha, what will happen to me? So will it be good for me or not good for me? So both the positions look equal. That way it's called samshaya. Samshaya means doubt. When the opposing positions appear to be equally valid. Then it's called doubt. A question is when I am not clear or I do not know something. But when this also seems to be right, that also seems to be right, and then I don't know which is right, so Arjuna is not sure which choice to make, whether should I stick to only karma ka karma, or should I actually be bold enough to become a renunciate. But he has a doubt, what will happen? Therefore, etan me samshayam Krishna. He Krishna, O Lord. Again as we said, Krishna is the one who removes the doubts and sorrow of the devotees, who grants all the desires. He Krishna. Me etat samshayam. This samshaya, this doubt of mine. Chetum arhasi asheshitaha. O Lord, you must remove this doubt of mine completely. Doubt should not be left in the mind. In the fourth chapter he said, Samshayatma Vinashyati. A doubting person ultimately comes to a destruction. Because I cannot trust anything. I take up something and I start doubting and giving it up. Take up something and I doubt that and give up. There are many people who cannot settle down at all. So you want water, you start digging a well, 15 feet, oh no, I don't think this will work. Give it up. Second one. 25 it, I don't need silver. And like that, whole life is gone in digging well and not getting water at all because you cannot trust. When you cannot trust in our life, it's really a very sad and unfortunate thing when a person cannot trust. It's not anybody's fault that I cannot trust. Sometimes our, our trust has been violated so much that we find that nobody is trustworthy. So I mean, you can't trust anybody these days. And then you keep on suspecting everybody's intention and not knowing what their intention is. That's what he says, but I don't know what he means. He is inviting me all right, but I don't know whether he really means to invite me or not. He smiles all right, but I don't know whether he really smiles. Therefore, you cannot enjoy anything. You cannot enjoy anything. Even in this life also, you cannot have a, a settled mind. Therefore, some share of doubt must be removed. And particularly here, doubt must be removed. Therefore, Lord, you, it is proper for you to remove my doubt completely. Then somebody says, all right, Lord Krishna may say, well, why do you have to ask me? I mean, anybody else can remove this doubt. Go to somebody else. He says, no. Tot anya asya samshayasya cheta nahi upadyate. O oh Lord, no one other than you is qualified enough to remove this doubt. You are the most qualified. 
Arjuna knows that this is God. That's how he says. And who is God? He is called Parama Guru, who Yoga Shastra says, Sarvesham Purvasmat. Because Ishwara is before everybody. Purvesham api. Even of earlier gurus and earlier acharyas, also Ishwara is a guru because he is there before them also. So Ishwara is the greatest guru. And Ishwara is, has revealed the scriptures for the, for guiding all the people. He is the most greatest well-wisher. He is the greatest guru. And when you are in front of me, not only that, but this requires someone who knows what is happening in this life as well as other life also. If somebody else, even a Rushi or anybody, suppose removes my doubt, he would only <coughs> talk about something after death only from the scripture. If you ask me a question, Swamiji, uh, uh, what's the guarantee that uh, there was a previous birth? What's the guarantee? What's the guarantee that there will be new birth? I would say because the scripture says so. What can I, I have not seen it. I mean, I have not seen your past. What, what was I in the past? But one child asked me. Oh, would it not be nice if I knew what I was in the past birth? This question remains. I don't know. I have not seen your past birth, my past birth, and I don't know. I am not going to be, I will not be around to see my next birth anyway. So if, if a mortal being, however great he is, if he says something about this kind of a thing, it's only going to be based on the evidence of the scriptures. We can provide some supporting logic, but not proving logic. But Lord, you know everything. And so, Lord Krishna means Ishwara knows everything. That's called Bhagavan. Bhutanam agatim gatim. Who knows all the, the gati, all the movement, all the beings, what they have been, what they are, what they will be. Therefore, O oh Lord, you are the most qualified because you know what happens to a, a soul after he dies. And you yourself told me. In the fourth chapter, Lord Krishna proclaimed, Bahuni me vyatidani janmani tavacharjuna tanyam veda sarvani natvam vetha parandapa. Here, Juna, both you and I have undergone a number of births in the past. The difference with you and I is that I know them all and you do not know. So Lord Krishna himself said, I know everything in the past. In the seventh chapter he will also say, Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani bhutani maam tu vedana kasyana. Here, Juna, I know everything that has gone by in the past. I know what is what obtained in the present. I know what all is going to come in future. I know everything. So, Lord, you know. And therefore, Tvadanya, other than you, there is no one who is as qualified as you to remove this doubt. And therefore, you are the right one to remove the doubt. That's what Nishikada told Yamaraja also. And so, when I am in front of you, why should I go to some other teacher? Yamaraja may say, all right, you can try some other teacher. No. When I am in front of you, why should I try some other teacher? I am in front of the most competent teacher. Why should I go anywhere else? And so, Arjun also says that you are, you know all the three periods of time. You know what is before birth, during birth, after the birth, after the death. You are the Paramaguru, you are the Hitech, you are the Suhrut, uh, meaning you are the well wisher of everybody, and therefore you are the right person to remove this now. So this is how, basically, Arjuna is a Vedic person. So this question of Arjuna can properly be appreciated by us if you understand Arjuna's orientation as the one who was growing up in a Vedic culture. So that has some orientation. And therefore, at that time, people were very, very particular about the concern, the tremendous concern about what will happen after death, whether we will be assured in a proper place in the heavens or not. This is very particular. So heavens were important, you know, what Gati will be after, all of this was very important. And therefore they conducted themselves such in this lifetime, so as to assure an appropriate place in the heavens later on, after death. So if that also I lose and this also I don't gain, what will happen to me? As far as we are concerned, 
this question interests us also. Because in answer to this doubt of Arjuna, Lord Krishna as though describes the, the, the life, I should not say life, but describes really the process of a process of a spiritual aspirant. So what Arjuna asks here, and what Lord Krishna replies now, in fact, applies to everyone. So let us see what Lord Krishna has to say. Says in the next verse. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Partha Naive Hana Mutra Vinashastasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Krutkaschita Durgatim Tata Gachati So Lord says, He Partha. So when Lord Krishna says Partha, Kauntaya, there is some affection also involved. Of course, Lord Krishna loves Arjuna because he is the disciple, he is the devotee. But now and then Partha. Partha means son of Prutha. Prutha is the, the aunt of Lord Krishna, his father's sister. Therefore, there is a special thing also. I mean, you know, in the olden days, very often the fathers used to be teachers and the son used to be the uh, disciple. So then there is a special bond. There is already a bond between disciple and the, and the teacher and disciple, between father and son, an additional bond. You also the additional bond that Lord Krishna has for Arjuna. Not only Arjuna is a disciple, not only is a devotee, he is a friend also, he is also a cousin. He so whenever Lord Krishna wants to console him, reassure him, then he uses this kind of word also. Hey Partha, my brother, don't worry. Naivaiha namutra tasya vinasaha vidyate. Do not worry. What will happen to this, this aspirant? Don't worry. Because neither here nor in, after death. Vinasaha. Vinasaha means a, he never comes to a bad lot. And so the one, the, this Vinasaha here this doesn't mean destruction, but then the, the person never comes to a bad end or a bad lot. Nahi kalyan kasit. Durgatim Tata Gatsati. He Tata. Again Lord Krishna addressed Arjuna as Tata. Actually Tata means father. But then father alone, I mean in fact is born as a son. Therefore the word Tata is used also for son. So here Lord Krishna uses the word Tata for Arjuna in the, in the sense of son. My son, don't worry. Kalyanakrat. One who is on the path of dharma. One who is on path of righteousness. One who has the wealth of Shraddha and Vairagya. So one way some dispassion and one way Shraddha or the faith because Shraddha peta. So Arjuna said that this aspirant is endowed with Shraddha. Shraddha means an implicit trust in the scriptures as well as the teacher. And his Vairagya also, he has dispassion also because he has given up the worldly life and he has taken to life of renunciation. Therefore, he also has Vairagya. Further, he is striving. Even though not striving hard enough, he is striving to gain an abidance in his knowledge. He is called Kalyanakrit. So one who is a doer of Kalyanam. Kalyan here means that will lead ultimately to moksha. So one who is on, a, on the spiritual path. Whether it is a householder, renunciate, whoever he is. Whoever is on the path of righteousness. Because one cannot even follow the dharma. One cannot follow even values in life. Unless there is shraddha, the basic trust. That by doing this, I am going to, it is going to be for my well-being. When I follow a life of non-violence or truthfulness, it will help me, will not hurt me. If that kind of shraddha is there. 
in what the scriptures say, what the teachers say, when there is trust in those words, then alone we can take to a life which involves a certain amount of pain. Life of dharma involves pain. And performing rituals, all of it involves exertion. And one could not be doing those things unless there is shraddha, that all of this is going to bring about the results that the scriptures promise. So, Hanuman Chalita says that, if you want to become free from bondage, recite Hanuman Chalita hundred times. There are people who do that. Now, hundred times Hanuman Chalita, it takes several hours. Who will do that? Only one is trust, trust, shraddha in that statement, you know, otherwise nobody will do that. And so, you modaka sahasrenajajade, savanchit phanavapnoti, if you perform this, if you, when you are chanting this Ganesha Sarva Sirsa, one of the statements is that one who offers one thousand modakas to Lord Ganesha with the recitation of mantra, or one who recites this Ganesha Sarva Sirsa thousand times, he gets desired fruit. People do that. Now, who will chant thousand times? Chanting one time a day also we don't get time, a thousand times. That is a lot of commitment. When will you do that? Only when there is an implicit faith. Therefore, a spiritual aspirant, uh, you know, naturally presupposes that he has shraddha, he has faith, he has devotion of some amount. Some shraddha is there, some devotion is there, some commitment to dharma is there, some commitment to karma yoga is there, some understanding of moksha is there, something is there in the life. That people, even from their busy life, even twice a month they come to Gurukulam to listen, that itself is quite a big thing. It may not be enough, but it's a big thing still. It's far from enough, I guess, but still, it's like something. There are some people who come here every other week and say, what are you doing with all the children? So what is this? You mean, oh, children, how do children now have to come here? Because even if parents want to, children, want to, yeah, you want to go to beach, you want to go to park, you want to go to seven flags, whatever. <laughs> so they don't allow you. They also come, so what's wrong with you people? Sometimes I really con- I get concerned about that. There's something wrong or what? You're not normal people. That shows there is something. That's called Kalyana. That shows that there is a love for this, a commitment for this. So Lord Krishna says, Nahi Kalyana Krutkas, whoever it is, Kasitnas, whoever it is, not only Brahmana, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, man, woman, good, bad, I mean not good, bad, but young, old, here, there, anywhere. <coughs> They don't say only one who is a Hindu and one is no stuff, stuff, no such description, I mean restrictions are there, anybody. So a child asked me, Swamiji, how come Hindus don't convert? I said, there's no need to convert. Anybody who follows these values is a Hindu, it doesn't matter what, even what religion he follows and where he is born, it doesn't matter to Hindus. Who to follow these basic principles is Hindu. Kaschit, therefore. That you will not find other things. Only when you are Christian that you can go, and a Jew then you can have, and a Muslim, that's what, you know, they, they, all those things are reserved only for them. Here, kaschit, number of times, whoever it is. Nahi kalyana kurt kaschit, durgatim tadakachati. Oh my son, do not worry. Neither here, nor later on. Don't, don't worry about this. See, Arjuna is a kshatriya. And concern of Kshatriya is always his fame and name and his image. The Kshatriya are very conscious about the image. And they will give their life to protect their image. Ragukula Riti Sada Chaliyai Prana Jai or Bachana Najai. So Dashar King Dasharada says that in Ragukula we can give up our life, but we will never uh, go back on our words. So Lord Krishna assures Arjuna, don't worry. He means in this world also, there is nothing to lose. Because what is meant by loss in this world? Is that because you became a renunciate, because you give up all the duties, etc., people will then criticize you, you know. There will be ninda or censure, people will censure you. That's the great, don't worry, Arjuna, that will not happen. Everybody understand that a person who becomes renunciate, in fact, has 
this Vairagya, he has made a great commitment, so people will respect him. So don't worry about the image in this world also. And do not worry about heavens also. Because scriptures say that the person who has become a sannyasi goes to Brahma Loka. Don't worry. So neither here nor later, that is neither here nor hereafter, will he ever come to a bad lot. And the one who has taken to path of spiritual growth, there he will never come to a bad lot. <coughs> it's an escalator. When you step in, you go up, never come down. Some escalators are faster, some are slower. Some escalators are 500 feet. You know, if you go to some of these airports, you long, okay, will take time. Some are short, some are slow, some are fast, some are making a lot of noise. You know, that's how they are. Doesn't matter. We will reach today or tomorrow. When you are on this path, you are on the escalator. That's what Lord Krishna says. You can never fall down, you can never come down. <coughs> Now Lord Krishna clarifies that in, uh, if you say that, okay, if he does not come to a bad lot, he never suffers a loss, he never falls from his path, then what happens to him? What happens after that? That Lord Krishna proceeds to say here. Next verse. Prapya punyakritam lokan Ushitva Shashvati Samaha Suchinam Srimatangye Yoga Bhrashto Vijayate Here, the aspirants are sort of divided into two categories. There are those who have strong vairagya, strong dispassion, meaning those who have no, those who do not have any desire or any inclination for sense pleasures here or hereafter. What is called vairagya? Iha mutrartha phala bhoga viraga. That's called vairagya. When one has discovered a lack of interest or dispassion, for all the pleasures available here or available in some other world like heavens, etc. Or even Brahma Loka. One who is very committed and one who is very clear that I, I do not want any pleasure. What I want is nothing but the self. Because any pleasure is going to be limited and always will keep me a seeker of the pleasure. And therefore, one who has discovered this strong vairagya. That's one kind of aspirant. There are others who do have vairagya, but not strong enough. Meaning that still, they do retain certain fascination for some exalted things. I mean, ordinary things may not appeal to them, but still, big things. Swamiji, I, you know, I have some very expensive tastes, and so, (laughs) expensive tastes. So they don't buy ordinary things, they buy only expensive things. So also, the spiritual aspirant also in his mind may have uh, some fascination for pleasures available in, going in, in heavens. You see this, I hear the description of the scriptures, and how things are. As people when I in India, they hear a lot about United States and all kinds of things, and you know, inside. That is that, some fascination is there. If an opportunity comes, I would like to do that, love to go there. Similarly also, while being on the earth, you hear about the pleasures available in the heavens and in the higher realms, and therefore, that attraction is there. It is not gone. So Lord Krishna here describes these two kinds of devotees. One in whom still some attraction for the pleasure has remained. Another one who is totally free from that. So verse that we just read describes the, the destiny or the, or, the, of, or the gati of someone who does have some attraction for the pleasures. So, with reference to that, Lord Krishna says, Prapya Purnikritam Lokan. Lokan means realms. Swamiji, seven heavens, you know, these are questions. Because when they hear in their value and, and the Vedic heritage class, and they ask me all these questions. Fourteen words, where are they? Where are these fourteen words, you know, seven up and seven down? Are there actually these places? Are there people living there? 
So are they, do, are they aliens? That's another interest they have. Because people living there are called aliens, you know. Because that's the description. Because a, a, a kinnara is, I think, the horse of the head, uh, head of the horse, and, and Gandharva is something else, and so they are, they are not quite human beings, they are also strange beings, and then therefore uh, they will be called aliens. So are there such things? Do the scriptures believe in aliens? I said, I would, I would accept that. Yes, they believe in that. But anyway, accepting that there are realms, places or levels of consciousness. So those realms which are attained by the people who accumulated a lot of punya. Lord Krishna means to say that when a person becomes a renunciate and devotes his life to the pursuit of knowledge, even though he has not gained perfection, even though he could not exert himself totally, and still that very pursuit of knowledge, very study of the scriptures, and very contemplation of oneself to whatever the degree it is, or whatever quality it is, and still that in itself generates such an amount of punya that in fact outweighs any amount of punya that you may accumulate by performing rituals, etc. And there is a, in fact, there is a very beautiful verse. We don't have enough time, but I, I wanted to just read that verse for you. It says, Snatam tena samastatirtha salile. This person, so the punya, the virtue that you get, on account of contemplation upon the self or contemplation upon Brahman, what an amount of punya or virtue it actually generates for you. That is equal to, this person is as good as taken a dip in all the holy places. Snatam tena samastatir salile. There are the holy places where it is auspicious to take a dip and you get punya. So this person has, has gained the punya that would have come to him if he had taken dip in all the holy places. Sarvapidatta vanihi. Of all the charity, Giving land is supposed to be the most, uh, I mean, is supposed to be the greatest. So this person has, he has already earned punya equal to having given the entire earth in charity. Yajnanam cha krutam sahasram akhila ma sahasram. When you perform yajna, vedic yajna again, lot of punya. But this person has, you can say, he has already performed 1000 yajnas. Akhila devasya sampujitaha. When you worship devatas, again you get punya. This person is equivalent to worship all the devatas. Samsaracha samudrata swapitaraha. And when you lead a virtuous life here, they say that your ancestors also get liberated. So he has already liberated all his ancestors from samsara. Liberated. Trailokya Pujyopya Savu and he becomes one who is worshipped in all the three worlds. Who is that person? Yasya Brahma Vichara Yakshamapi Stairam Manaf Prapnuyat. Even for a moment, if your mind settles down in Brahman, even for a moment, then all this punya comes to you. So what the idea is that Lord Krishna says that this person who has dedicated himself to the pursuit of knowledge, he has already earned so much punya that prapya punya kritam lokan, people who perform ashwamedha, yajna, etc. and the kind of realms that they get, this person will get those realms. Ushitva, shashvadi, sama, and, and dwelling there for a long time. Because so much punya is accumulated that he will have to stay there for a long time to exhaust that punya and enjoy those pleasures. Because some little desire for enjoying pleasure remained in him. Therefore, he goes to those realms and comes back as a human being. That's another thing. You're sure to come back as a human being. Swamiji, but what will happen to me? Well, if you live like a human or better than that, you'll come back as a human being. Suchinam, Srimatam, Gehe, Yoga Bhrashto, Vijayate. Yoga Bhrashta. The one who has deviated from the path of yoga or path of the avoidance in knowledge, he is born, Sushinam Srimatam Gehe. He is born in the family of the wealthy and those who are pure or cultured. 
The wealthy people may not necessarily have a culture. And therefore to be born there may be actually a result of sin also. Who knows? Because all kinds of... If you are born in a family where there is a lot of wealth, you are dirty rich, and the culture is not there, then that wealth is utilized only in indulgence. So children also will indulge, even more than parents perhaps. And that way they are only inviting the downfall, that's all. If you are born in cultured family but they are very poor, then also it's not good because there is a sense of deprivation. So to be born in poor family also may be a result of papa. Because there is deprivation all along. To be born in a wealthy family and family there is culture. There this person will not have a sense of deprivation because he has all the pleasures that are required. And therefore, you see what happens is sometimes even if you take to life of sannyasa, even the previous stage, you did not quite have a good life. Or I say, then you're depri- there was a life of deprivation of even like ordinary pleasure, suppose. Then that sense of deprivation sometimes remains. And therefore, it is not a good idea that one becomes a renunciate with a sense of deprivation. You better finish off your vasanas. Experience what you need to. If you go without that, it will haunt you all the time. But then when this person is born in a wealthy family, no such thing. Therefore, he will be, he, as far as all his desires for pleasures will be satisfied. At the same time, because he is born in a cultured family, therefore, he will be on the path of dharma also. And therefore, he will not have downfall, he will continue his spiritual journey. <coughs> However, those people who had a strong vairagya when they died, what will happen to them? The next verse describes them. Athava yogi nameva Kule bhavati dhimatam Etad dhidur lavataram Loke janmaya dhidrusham Athava or if the person had vairagya, meaning that now there was no vasana or no desire for any pleasure, then he'll be born in a family where there is no pleasure. But yogi nam, he'll be born in a family of a yogi. He'll be born in a family of the wise. Yogi means where there are samskara of yoga, where there are samskara of knowledge, where there are samskara of wisdom, where there is love for scriptures, where there is love for knowledge, where there is love for devotion, in that atmosphere. And Yogi Nameva, those people were not wealthy, but they are yogis. Dhimatam, those people are wise. So this person was born in the family of the wise as well as yogi. There is no wealth there. There is no, and that being the case, there is no likelihood of being corrupted by the pleasures, number one. The parents already have the devotion of Vairagya, therefore he has that atmosphere, therefore he will have the Vairagya also. And because they are yogis, because they are themselves pursuing the path of spiritual growth, automatically he will be on that path also. Etadhidurbhataram. Lord Krishna says this kind of birth is very rare. Even more rare. To be born in a wealthy family, more rare than that, is to be born in a, in a poor family, but where there is culture, where there is values, where there is dharma, where there is love for knowledge, where there is the devotion to be born in that family, in fact, is even rare. Yet idrusham janma, that kind of janma or birth is dullabhataram, even more rare, Lord eh, Arjuna. So thus, these two kinds of devotees, destiny or the path has been described here. <coughs> From then on now, the next verse is applied to both of them. So what happens? Now this person is born here, the, what is called yoga bhrashta, meaning one who did not quite complete his journey and therefore who was, you can say, deviated from the path of yoga. What happens to him? Lord Krishna describes uh, his journey. So verse 43 says, Tatratam buddhisaṁ yogam 
लभते पौर्वदेहिक यतते चतो भूय संसिद्ध कुरु नंदन तत्र सो वेर एवर ही इज बॉर्न आयदर एज सेट बॉर्न इन द वेल्दी एंड कल्चर फैमिली और इन पुअर एंड वाइज फैमिली वेर एवर इज बॉर्न तम बुद्ध पौर देहिकम बुद्ध संयोगम लभते देर ही गेट्स कनेक्टेड विथ बुद्धि संयोगम ही गेट्स कनेक्टेड विद बुद्धि ही गेट्स कनेक्टेड विद नॉलेज ही गेट्स कनेक्टेड विद विजडम दैट ही एड एक्वायर्ड पौर देहिकम इन द प्रीवियस लाइफ सो इन द प्रीवियस लाइफ मीनिंग इन द प्रीवियस ह्यूमन लाइफ Suppose he went to heaven and stuff like that, and came back. Or right away he was born into the form, the family of the yogi. But then he gets connected with whatever he had acquired in the past. As we say, when a person is writing a letter, a long letter, and the letter remains incomplete, and you fall asleep, and next day again you start writing the letter, you begin from where you stopped last yesterday, and you do not start all over again. meaning that the person does not start all over again he continues from where he left off in the previous birth lavate pauru dehikam buddhi sanyogam and also the samskaras that he has are also based on what he was doing suppose earlier he was a devotee of lord shiva then his tendencies will be to be devotee of lord shiva Or he was devotee of Narayan, or whatever kind of things he was doing. If those samskaras also he will discover in this birth, or he was studying Vedanta and he studied, then also he will be born with that advantage. Swami, you remember what? So when you were listening to Swami, did you remember? You thought that you heard all this before? Then of course you can. Some people even say that when they hear, I think this Swami is all familiar to me. Some people do report. When they listen to the talks, the classes, some people say, it "Looks like it's familiar." Or somebody says, "Swami, this I already knew. I'm just getting confirmation." That's what some people say. This is not new to me, except that now this is getting confirmed, or I'm getting further clarity. Thus, whatever kind of progress a person has made, if he was pursuing the path of knowledge of Vedanta, then that is what he gets connected. To. If he was a devotee of a certain deity, he gets connected to that. He was a karma yogi, he gets connected to that. Whatever it is that the person was doing in this birth also, he or she gets connected to the pursuit of the previous life. Yatha te cha tato bhuya hai, and somehow one knows as to how one actually missed the last time in the ever bhuya hai yatha te. He again starts his effort once again. Bhuya ha, tato bhuya ha. In fact, now he makes more intense efforts than what he did in the past past life. Because I think there is some awareness that he missed out. He doesn't want to miss out now and therefore, tato bhuya ha. He strives even stronger. Some siddho kuru nanda na, some siddhi for perfection, for moksha, for the ultimate goal in this life. In fact, he strives even harder than he did before. That idea is amplified in the next verse further. Purva bhyaase na te naiva, kriyate shiva shopi sah, jigna surapi yoga sya, sabda brahma ti vartate. Purva abhyasa na, because of previous practice. So when you practice something again and again, you gain a certain momentum. Therefore, you gain a certain momentum because of practice that the person was doing in a previous life. Practice may be of japa, practice may be of puja, practice may be of chanting, 
Practice may be of study, practice may be of teaching, practice may be of meditation, practice of concentration, practice of contemplation. This one or more, whatever practice he was doing, he had gained a certain momentum. Purva abhyasena, anagara abhyas was the practice that he had performed in his past life. Avashabhi shriyade, the person is helplessly drawn to that. A person finds himself helplessly drawn. Arjuna may have questioned but Swami and but Lord, if this fellow is born in a wealthy family, then he will get spoiled with all these wealth and all these pleasures. Then how will he get connected? He said, Arjuna, don't worry. When his prarabdha of enjoyment gets over, right away there is going to be a sudden change in his life. Look at yourself. Lord Krishna can point out Arjuna, look at yourself. You came to the battlefield with a desire to win the battle, win this war. And what has happened to you? You are turned into a, a seeker of knowledge. It happened to Arjuna. Purva abhyasena. Because of abhyasa it was performed because of practice of the past. Avasha. Otherwise there is, I mean it's just most amazing all of a sudden Arjuna asked Lord Krishna, Shishyasteham sadhimam tvam prapannam. I'm your disciple. Please teach me. And what's the connection? He says, I do not want to fight this battle. And is completely filled with pity and grief. And incapable of carrying out his duty. At that time, actually, he would say, Lord Krishna, please take me home. I want to take some rest, you know. Let me take rest. Let me get some tranquilizer. Let me get some medication. And then I'll do something. He could have asked that. Or oh, let us get out from here and let them do whatever they want to. He could have said that. After he was a boss and he could have said, Lord Krishna, come on, let me out. Lord Krishna cannot say, I will not take you. He's, he's a driver, he's a driver. He didn't say that. Because, I mean, something happened to him. We do not know which is better, O Lord, whether to fight this battle or not fight. We don't even know whether we will win or they will win. But I still, I'm not sure whether it is right to fight the battle, it's better to fight the battle or not fight the battle. Dharma Samura Chetaha, my mind is completely deluded with reference to Dharma. What is reference to what my duty is? You please teach me. Thus, he is converted to a jignyasu. He became a desirer of knowledge, seeker of knowledge. And can you imagine people's question, Holy Swami, really this dialogue took place in the battlefield? How many hours does it take? 700 verses? It takes about two and a half hours when we have recital of Bhagavad Gita. We, all the people are waiting at that time. I said, yes, because Dharma Yuddha. Dharma Yuddha means you do not strike somebody who is without weapons. Arjuna's weapons are down. So they will not, they will not strike at him. Only when he picked up his weapon, that is when the battle will begin. You are all waiting. But Arjuna, he forgot where he is really. He is, he is no concern about this battle. Vistarena Atmano Yogam Vibhutim Chajanarda Bhuya Katha O oh Lord Krishna, please describe in great detail all your glories. Well, what, what is, you are in the battlefield. You are asking, you know, I already told you earlier. No, no, Bhuya, please tell me again. Why? Because I am not satisfied. Listening to your nectar words, I don't seem to be satisfied at all. So please keep going. No, can you imagine this? This is not an ordinary thing. Arjuna came to battlefield with the desire to fight. All that thing has completely gone away. And he is, his mind is completely filled with just nothing but this knowledge, nothing else. Nothing seems to matter to him. What a transformation. So Arjuna, that happens. When the time comes, it happens. It doesn't matter. You are also born in a great family. Arjuna, of course, is like this. He is born in a family that is rich in everything, culture. And the time came. Therefore, pura, avasahapi, effortless, not avasha, I mean helplessly. Helplessly person is drawn. 
People live and leave their home. They just get out, get away. I don't know what. They get, become mad, looks like. Something happens to them. Sometimes people, something happens to people. They don't know what is happening to them. Avashaya. <coughs> Sometimes a person becomes helpless. But helplessly is drawn. <coughs> He goes to all, he, people have gone to places, I mean, the whole world is searching for a guru. And what amount of pains they have suffered, you know, for us, I want my guru. And so, uh, days and days and months and years, and then they found somebody, they found. <coughs> Some corner of the world, uh, God knows, in God forsaken place, but he goes to that person, of all the people in the world. Sankaracharya himself, all the way from Kaladi, south. Kept walking and walking all the way he came to Narvada. Pura abhyasa te neva. This is story of each one of us. It's not story of some X, Y, Z. You will find all of this happening in your own life, in fact. The reason why we are talking is this is our story. Understand that nobody has begun from this birth. It is an ongoing process. And not that people are here just as an accident. Many people are here because the children, I mean, you know, they're all trapped, I guess, in this class also. I do not know. Because, I mean, they just came to pick up their children and all, right? Let us go to the class. However it is. Whether you're listening or not listening, understanding, there was something. <coughs> Everything has a reason. Nothing happens without any reason. There must be something. So, here te vasubi vidjigna surubi yogasya Sadda Brahma Adivartate Yoga se Jignasu Hapi One is Jignasu One is desirous of this knowledge Sadda Brahma Adivartate He transcends the Sadda Brahma means Karma Kanda He has no more interest in karma in terms of going to heavens etc. He performs karma He performs only Vantahagana Shuddhi for purification of mind He doesn't use karma anymore as means of any kind of pleasures here or hereafter that kind of thing it transcends because of the samskaras, because of the momentum of the past. <coughs> and therefore, continuing, Prayatna Nyatamanastu Yogi Samshuddha Kildishaha Aneka Janma Samsiddha Tato yati parangatim. Pratna yatamanastu. Pratna, one who is making a greater and greater effort. Yatna and pratna. So, whatever effort he made, he makes greater and greater effort in this lifetime. Yatamanaha, adhikam yatamanaha, and thus, who is in fact striving more diligently. Yogi samshuddha kilvishaha. What is coming in his way is nothing but kilvishaha, some impurities. Impurities in terms of ragadvesha, in terms of some attachment or fascination or sense pleasure, they are the impurities. Some impulses left within, there are impurities. All that we need to do, as we must have seen now in last week, is that all we need to do is to remove impurities. That's all. Yogina karma kurvandi sangam tektva atma shuddha. The karma yogis perform action only by purification of mind. Upa vishyasana yunjat yogam atma vishuddha. Even here also Lord Krishna says that may you meditate, may you contemplate upon the self for purification of mind. The first level of purification is likes and dislikes. The second level of purification is freedom from ignorance. Therefore, this purification also keeps on happening every birth. So, prayatna dhyatamanastu yogi samshuddha kilvishaha. Who's kilvisha, who's papa, or sin meaning those things which come in and become obstacles. So, those which become obstacles to his pursuit, all those obstacles are called sin, are the result of this sin, or whatever you call it, and they get slowly and slowly exhausted. And there were aneka janna samsiddha, thus gaining perfection over a number of births. Aneka janma samsiddha, tato yati paramgatim, 
at the end, he gains the ultimate goal, which is moksha. The seventh chapter also, Lord Krishna says, Bahunam Janmanam Ante Jnanavan Maham Prapadyate. It is after many births that a wise person knows me as the self of all. <coughs> so this is the answer. In all these verses, Lord Krishna answered the question of doubt of Arjuna. There is no reason to doubt. No reason to even worry at all. You can never be at a loss. You can never go down. You always go up when you have you are pursuing the path of spiritual growth. When there is sincerity is there. When there is honesty, when there is sincerity, difficulties can be there. Imperfections are there, difficulties are there, ragad desha are there, everything is there. But when there is a commitment that this is what I want, I know that I, I have these impurity, likes and dislikes, I want to get over with them. I know that I have difficulty with my mind, I want to get over with them. Thus, that is this honesty, that is a commitment to the purpose. When this is there, Lord Krishna says that you can never fall back. You will always go up. I mean, you will always proceed until you reach the ultimate goal. <coughs> that being the case, in the verse 46, Lord Krishna says, Tapasvibhyo dhiko yogi Jnanibhyo pimato dhikaha Karmibhyaschadhiko yogi Tasmad yogi bhavarjuna Tasmad here juna yogi bhava therefore here juna may become a yogi who is a yogi in the context of the sixth chapter that we discuss yogi is one who is committed to the pursuit of knowledge. One who is committed to the goal of gaining an abundance in knowledge. Lord Krishna said, Dukkha Sanyoga Vyoga Yoga Sanyataha. In fact, this yoga is nothing but disassociating with pain and therefore association or identity with Atma. Therefore, Lord Krishna describes this yogi. Prashantamanasam hyenam yoginam sukhamuttamam upayri shandarajasam brahmabhutam akalmasam. So when all these obstacles are removed, then the infinite or the unsurpassable happiness in fact comes to this yogi. Therefore, by yogi here we mean a seeker of knowledge, one with a commitment to gain the knowledge and gain an abidance in the knowledge. Arjuna therefore yogi bhava, you become a yogi. Don't become a bhogi. Because a bhogi becomes a rogi. And that as sarva, you become a yogi. Tapasvi bhyodhiko yogi. This yogi is greater than a tapasvi. Tapasvi means a person who is, takes to the life of austerities. Which is a great thing to do. It's also a religious pursuit and can be a spiritual pursuit. But merely performing, if you perform austerities, a yogi also means a nishkama karma yogi. The yogi has two stages. The first stage is Nishkama Karma Yoga, performing one's duties selflessly. So a selfless person is superior to anybody else who is self-centered. A person who performs, does, his, proceeds on his spiritual path with selflessness, is superior to anybody else who is doing all those practices with the desire for some gratification. So even if there is a tapasvi, meaning that the person who lives a life of austerity, but then he has this intention that as a result I will go to heavens, or I will get some wealth, meaning that it is done with a certain desire of worldly gain, then better than the tapasvi is his yogi who, who lives a life of selflessness, who performs the action as a service, as an offering, and who pursues knowledge also. This yogi is better than even a learned person. So there are people who are very well learned in the scriptures. Yesterday if you listen to Ashok, he went to Banaras and he really came to know what is called learning. There are people who are really great scholars. 
And so they will learn so many texts and so many difficult texts also. But still sometimes you do not see a flowering in their personality. I am not suggesting all of them, but many of them. Because very often this, this scholarship is still used as a means of livelihood. Or as a means of attaining some kind of worldly gain, unfortunately. Because many years ago this person comes to me and this family, I want to join this course. Said, what did you call it? What did you study? Oh, I'm an Acharya. Meaning you already studied Vedanta to Acharya in Banaras. I said, then why do you want to join us? I mean, you are not going to learn anything. No, no, but you are teaching in English. I want to, therefore I want to study in English. For what? So I can go to Canada and then I can give, you know. So, you want to gain even the scholarship for what purpose? And all of those things are a little slippery, you understand, you know, everything can become slippery. If you are not alert, so, jnani, jnani here means that a person who is well versed in scriptures. But still, that scriptural learning is not applied as a means of moksha, it is applied as a means of something else. Yogi means mamoksha, or a jignasa. Karmi vyaschatiko yogi. This yogi is superior to also karmi means the person who does a lot of karma kind, a lot of rituals. Provided those rituals are also done for some material gain. The idea is that it is a good thing for us to become a tapasvi meaning an person. And then there must be austerity in our life. Rituals mean the worship also should be in our life. Scholarship or study of scriptures also must be in our life. Lord Krishna doesn't say that don't become a tapasvi or don't become a karmi or don't become a jnani. He doesn't say that. He says that a yogi is the one who, does, who, pers- who takes all of these things for the purpose of moksha and not for any other purpose. So these are religious and spiritual pursuits that in life of a spiritual aspirant there must be tapasarya, there must be austerity and penance, must be there. There must be also study of scriptures, it must be there and a certain amount of scholarship also is desirable. Then you study Sanskrit and you have the access to some original text, that also is desirable. If you don't have that, it's okay, but if you have, it's desirable. Karmi, meaning that there must be duty in your life also, there must be rituals of worship, must be there in life. Then why does Lord Krishna say the yogi is better than all of this? If all of this is done for some worldly purpose, then that is meaningless, then it is samsari. A person is called samsari as long as he is seeking only the gains in samsara, here or hereafter. So Arjuna do all of this, but not for samsara, not for pleasures here or in the heavens, you for your liberation, for purification of heart you do all of this. So perform your penance, perform your rituals, study your scriptures, do all of this for antahakan shuddhi, for purification of heart. So that a real jignyasa, a genuine desire for knowledge is there. So that your life becomes a genuine process of seeking. <coughs> the smart yogi bhava arjuna. Therefore, here arjuna may become yogi, may become seeker of knowledge, may become a person who is committed to moksha, who is committed to knowledge and committed to gain and abidance in knowledge. May you become that, may you have that commitment. <coughs> and the last verse of this chapter, is really a background for the next six chapters. The sixth chapter, as we say in the class, that Bhagavad Gita can be divided into three groups of six chapters each, and first six chapters of which this is the last, deals with karma and deals with the self-knowledge. The second six chapters deal with bhakti and knowledge of Ishvara. So here, the karma, karma yoga, as a spiritual means, and self-knowledge as a goal was described, and a yogi was described. Then next six chapters, bhakta, bhakti and bhagavan will be described. And so, it is style of scripture to sometimes give a hint or give a background or give in summary what is going to follow in detail. So this verse as though gives a summary of what will be Describe in detail in next six chapters. So let us read the last verse. Yogi nam api sarvesham. 
मध्यतेनात्म श्रद्धावान्जते यो मेयुक्तमोमत योगी अमंग ऑल द योगीज ऑल्सो मदगतेन अंतरात्मना अंतरात्मा मीनिंग माइंड दैट इज मत गता दैट इज अब्सॉर्ब इन मी श्रद्धा वन विज अबंड ऑफ श्रद्धा एंड डिवोशन फॉर मी यो माम भजते उन वर्शिप्स मी नाउ दिस मी इज ऑलवेज ए मैटर ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन देयर फॉर डिवोटिज ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा विल से दैट लॉर्ड कृष्णा क्लियरली सेज दोस हु वर्शिप मी लॉर्ड कृष्णा अदर्स विल से लॉर्ड कृष्णा सेज दोस हु वर्शिप मी हु इज नारायण But here, really, Lord Krishna uses the word "I," the pronoun "I," in the sense of either Saguna Brahma or Nirguna Brahma. Saguna Brahma is Ishvara, the Creator, Sustainer, Dissolver, Omniscient, Omnipotent. That is Ishvara. That's called Saguna Brahma, and that is nothing but the manifestation of Nirguna Brahma, transcendental reality, which even transcends all those attributes. Then the first the worship begins with Saguna Brahma, worshiping Ishvara, worshiping Lord with attributes, and it culminates in the worship or contemplation upon Lord beyond the attributes. This we all explain that first is a prayerful meditation, and then meditation upon Ishvara as my own self. So understand that Saguna Brahma means Brahman with attributes, where in that worship there is always a duality of the devotee and the Ishvara. And Nirguna Brahma means the one who wants to know Brahman as the very self. So Brahman, beyond the attributes, is nothing but my own self. That is what is meant by Maam. Shaddhavan bhajateya Maam. Meaning, who does not seek any lower goal in life, the one who only seeks the highest goal, which is what Lord Krishna represents, which is what the self of all, which is one and non-dual, which is limitless. So, Maam Bhajate, the one who worship me, the limitless. Although the limitless may worship first through the attributes and then transcending the attributes, both kind of worship we'll find in the next six chapters. Sarve Shyam Yogi Nam, as compared to other yogis who are worshiping me or who in their life has pursued other than ultimate pursuit of moksha, compared to them, this yogi. Who only whose only agenda is moksha is the most superior, and that the moksha can be attained by worshiping Lord. Mat gate n antar atmana by the mind that is absorbed in the Lord, shadhavan with plenty of shadha or the trust in the Lord, one who worships me, sami yukta tamo mata ha, he is the most exalted yogi. As I said, this verse is. an introduction to the subject matter that will follow in the next six chapters and thus lord krishna completes the discourse on the sixth chapter so let us read the last sankal vakya <coughs> om tat sat iti shrimad bhagavad gita su उपनिषत्सु ब्रह्म विद्यायाशास्त्रे श्रीकृष्णाजुन संवाद आत्मसंयम योगो नाम ष्ठोध्याय उदिष्य ध्यान योगो नाम But the well, there are several names. Chapters have more than one names, by the way. But most, uh, I mean, traditional name of this chapter is Atma Sanyam Yoga. Hai. So it means controlling the self or controlling the mind, or Dhyana Yoga, hai, the yoga of meditation. So this is the idea. The sixth chapter, of which of which the subject matter is meditation, which is in the form of the dialogue between Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Which is Bhagavad Gita, which is the state of the Upanishads, which has the primary subject of Brahma Vidya, and also Yoga Shastra 
in that the sixth chapter of which the topic subject matter is meditation is thus concluded. <coughs> Sarva dharman parityajya Mame kam sharanam braja Ahantva sarva pape bhya Moksha yishya mi mashucha Hari o Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Vadarayanam Sutra Bhasha Krita Vande Bhagavanta Punakunaha Ishvaro Guru Rahatmedi Murti Veda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Lakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om